Divers and people who spend a lot of time underwater, what's the creepiest most unexplainable thing you've seen while in the depths? Two biggest. My buddy was taking pictures. He wanted one of me surrounded by a school of fish, so I started tossing out small pieces of hot dog. I was immediately surrounded by so many perch, I couldn't see out. All of a sudden, a largemouth bass snagged one of the pieces of hot dog that was maybe 6 inches from my face. My mask blocked his approach. Scared the crap out of me. Second one was a night dive in very silty water. Visibility was less than 3 feet. Lowest eye mark, if I can't see my outstretched arm, it is 3 feet. We were near a flooded structure, maybe an old water tank, at about 35 feet. Something was flashing from our lights. Suddenly, I'm covered in something, and I couldn't see my light reflecting back. I pull it off my face, but it is still black, and I can feel it touching the top of my head. I try over and over to free myself, but I don't feel caught, just covered. Finally, I get clear. It was a large plastic trash bag. Keep your trash out of the water please. One of our assistant instructors got bit on the head and dragged 5 feet or so by a sea base at casino point while feeding the fish peas on our safety stop. He came out bleeding from his head and everyone thought he hit his head on the reef. The trash bag one is super scary. When I was a kid we used to go to a place during the summer holiday which had some very nice beaches and in particular an estuary with a very wide river mouth. One summer there was a king tide where enough of the water emptied out of the river into the ocean that you could snorkel quite easily from one side of the river mouth to the other as it got so shallow that it was only a meter or so deep at the deepest part. One day I decided to snorkel across from one beach to the one on the other side of the river and about halfway across where the depth to the bottom was maybe half a meter, I was swimming along the surface looking down with my mask slash snorkel on and a massive stingray passed directly underneath me. This thing was easily 2 meters across, covered in white scars, and missing its tail. I just froze in the water, and it felt like my heart stopped. If I had let my breath out, I would dropped in the water low enough that I would landed on it, it was so close. I wasn't in any danger, but having a massive creature appear so unexpectedly, so close up was absolutely terrifying. To clear up some confusion the stinger also gone. Just a sort of torn partial stump left of the tail. Something very similar happened to me snorkeling in Hanorma Bay in Ohu. Paddling along, having the time of my life, when a massive dark shape emerged in the distance. Before I knew it, it was sailing right under me. I sucked it in, because I was afraid it would graze my belly. Turned out to be an absolutely monstrous sea turtle. It was about the size of a mattress. Exhilarating and terrifying. I love Hanorma Bay. When I was a kid my grandma took me, and you could buy frozen peas from the snack bar to feed the fish. Obviously a really bad idea, which they've since stopped allowing, but it was a cool childhood memory. <coughs> On a night dive in Scripps Canyon a corma and rammed directly into my dive light at high speed, and knocked itself unconscious. I thought it was dead, but gently brought it back to the surface, where it woke up and took off. As much of a shock, that must have been this made me laugh. And that you helped an injured bird made me awe. Yes it was shocking, but had a happy ending. I later learned that sometimes creatures do this, because they think the light is the moon, and they race towards it, thinking that's the way out. I saved a perfectly fine looking small bird from my cat once, but I dropped it, and it got weaker and died. To be honest, it might not have been your fault. On birds injuries aren't always readily apparent, so there might have been a fracture you didn't see. Plus, small animals like rodents and songbirds can be prone to fear death. True. I have tried saving birds twice now. Once when a small bird was dropped from its nest, and some kids were poking it around I took it, but it died during the next night, probably why it was dropped from its nest, due to being sick. And the second one I tried to place on this little wooden ladder type thingy, and he fell, and you know the rest. Good intentions but bad luck. <coughs> Rescue slash recovery diver here. Every time I've recovered a drowning victim I get the creeps. Unfortunately a lot of people are under the impression that every underwater environment is like the movies, and there's absolute clarity, that's rarely the case. One evening I got called out for a young girl that jumped from a bridge, she likely survived the fall and entry. We have a morbid term for what happened to her upon hitting the water. Plugged. I found her with a surprising amount of visibility in relatively shallow water. 
She was stuck in the mud to just below her knees, and you could see the fear locked into her eyes slash face. There's nothing peaceful about suicide by bridge. We had a guy talk at my high school once about how he survived trying to commit suicide by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. It was not a fun lesson. Apparently he almost got dragged down by an octopus or fishing net. He said he wasn't sure, since he could barely move his body. That sounds fake af though. There's one person who claims they got saved by a seal. That actually might be true seals and dolphins like playing with humans and will most of the time try to push them up to the surface. I dropped my goggles and was trying to reach down in the river and grab it, but I pulled out a sheep skull by its sockets. Wasn't as creepy in hindsight, but 10 year old me was scared. Wold scared the shit out of me. Im 17 would 100% still creep me the hell out. 30 and would not have been okay with this. Another 30 year checking in. Another nope vote. Also 30. I got told a story once by a Maori language teacher of mine during my time at high school. We didn't learn much Maori, just listen to stories. A dam in the Waikato, New Zealand had begun to have visible cracks in the concrete on the outside part of the dam and some drivers were organized to dive down and check the inside submerged part of the dam for damage on that side. While they were down there, there was the usual debris you would find behind a man-made wall which prevents the water from flowing as it would normally do if there wasn't a dam there. Turns out what they thought were large logs were in fact huge eels which had gotten to the size of logs due to being prevented from migrating to the sea where they breed and die. So from being prevented from doing their natural life duties they just get larger and larger. That would be creepy seeing eels deep down in the water just floating around. The shrieking eels from the princess bride are the most terrifying thing ever to me. That fear has stuck into my adult life because no one has ever been able to tell me if they were fake or real eels used in the filming. My brain just can't deal with eels. You can dive in man-made lakes and check out what's left of old flooded homes and communities. It's pretty dark and spooky down there no matter what, especially when you think of all the big fish swimming around that are barely silhouettes until they're close. My buddy likes to dive in lakes. He said the creepiest thing, by far, is finding cemeteries 100 foot plus beneath the water in the dark. Here he quiet. For day edit, I asked him about big fish. He said there's definitely down there bigger than he expected, 4 or 5 feet. They're attracted to the lights and noise, but watch from a distance, which is nonetheless disinciting, just dark, second shapes drifting nearby. None of the monsters other folks are bringing up though. Someone just dove to the bottom of our lake to check a drain and now he won't go back under cause he said he saw a fish that could swallow him whole lol 20 plus feet long he said. Sturgeon? Fish can't be doctors. Edit, sweet, my highest rated comment. I'd like to thank my parents and apologize to Sergi and Fish. Also, thanks for the shiny things. You actually went there. He's not going back though. I had a dive master that told me once he was diving somewhere and found a full skeleton wearing diving gear with the air on the tank, turned off pretty deep down. If I remember correctly they said they reported it to the police and it was found out the man's wife turned off his air while they were on a dive to murder him. A coworker of mine goes cave diving and says that, while not super common, you do find dead bodies in swim gear in caves sometimes. People either go too far into the cave and then run out of oxygen on the way back or they squeeze past a tight gap and get stuck on the other side, unable to come back the way they came. That must be horrible to be in that situation. I can't think of anything worse. Especially the second option, knowing you're stuck, but still having oxygen, and being forced to wait until your oxygen runs out or just getting it over with yourself sounds like a fate worse than much else. If you YouTubed on old Saron cave diving story this happened to him. It's an intense story and luckily he managed to find his way back eventually. I was listening to the story and scared he didn't make it out, all while knowing he is the one telling the story. So crazy. Ha 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 thought Joe was gonna ask did you survive? I dive myself, but heard this story from a guarded diver. In 2010 a man took a test drive in a car with a salesman, and in a suicide attempt he drove the car off the pier into the sea and drowned. The salesman managed to escape my breaking the window and swimming to the surface. The divers were dispatched to retrieve the other man's body. This isn't in the news report which I have a link to below for anyone interested. 
Simply through working in marinas at the time I was able to be part of the conversation with the diver in question. When he got to the car, he said, the man was still facing forward, hands on the steering wheel, eyes wide. He'd been there a couple of hours now, where it gets creepy is, when the diver opened the driver door, this combined with the smashed window caused the currents to flow through the car and the man's wide-eyed head turned around slowly with the force of it to face the diver. This story is very creepy, but I'm mostly very pissed off at that person who decided their suicide had to involve another person. Why? Why why why? I know. That's very not cool. It's totally uncalled for. And completely unnecessary.